technology working, and we'll take it from there. Technology is working. Would you expect any different? Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> well, good morning, gents. I'll try and get through this. I've only got ten slides, so see the logic of why I only have ten slides. Um, so we should be able to get this done in uh, your half-hour window. So hopefully that will be good for you. Uh, but before I really move on too far, I just want to do a bit about the story so far. Because all good stories need a good context within which to sit. And for the Trent, the, the story is one of technical success, of market success, superlative reliability and superlative performance. And they build the context for the Trent 1000-10. So let's think about the Trent 1000 particularly. First we certify the 74,000 pounds of thrust. First to obtain 330 minutes ETOPS. First to achieve 4,000 passenger flights. So we're really pleased with the performance of the Trent 1000 and proud of it. Uh, it's delivering a great set of performance for us. We've won eight out of the last nine engine decisions on the 787. So clearly not only are we pleased with its performance, but our customers are pleased with it as well. And we, as you can see on the bottom of that chart there, we're claiming we have the best entry into service for a wide body engine. Uh, now clearly as, as journalists, you're not going to take my word for it. Uh, so take ANA's. ANA is our launch customer, uh, and this is uh, Nakamura-san, ANA's uh, Head of Flight Operations, uh, and the quote I think is in the uh, documentation and press release, uh, but it really has gone extremely well. ANA are putting uh, the 787 and the, the engine really through its paces with a very short flight cycle. So they're really giving it an arduous operation and the engine has come through with absolutely flying colours. And that forms a really solid basis for the next generations of Trent because the processors are delivering a service-ready uh, and operationally efficient product. And it has had a great EIS, 4,000 4, cycles, um, 14,000 hours, uh, engines, 8,500 engine cycles. Um, lead engine is now at about 1,700 hours, still going strong. And our engine dispatch reliability is, is well north of 99.9%. So really doing well, and it's just interesting on the day we announced 1000-10 that we have 10 aircraft in service. You will doubtless spot a cheesy reference to 10 quite a lot in this presentation. Uh, and I make no real apology for that. Um, the other thing I said was superlative performance. And some of you may have heard me say before, the Trent XWB, which we're currently flying on the flying test bed, is now confirmed as the most efficient aero engine flying in the world today. I suppose technically the most efficient jet engine flying in the world, that's more accurate. Um, and that's really good because the Trend XWB is the only large fan engine scheduled to be certified that's all new this decade. Robert, how do you find most efficient? I was always wondering how you... Miles done, fuel... It's literally... Yeah. 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 Um, and we, so there's two pieces to, the, to my point here that I just want to make. One is, it is the most efficient. So our datum is the best in the world. That's where we start from in developing forward. And that's where our technology is validated in the best, the most efficient engine around. But the other thing is, the Trent XUB is the only wide body, all new wide body engine that is scheduled to be certified this decade. So Rolls-Royce is the only manufacturer with a new generation engine after the engines for the 787. And the technology for that is what we're going to look to feed back into the Trent 1000. You'll be aware, I'm sure, that Rolls-Royce's policy is to take proven technology from a, from a later engine and feed it back into a previous engine. And that's exactly what we're trying to do here. So we get Trent 1000-10. Uh, could be that the, the, the number 1000 is 10 times 10 times 10. It could be that we did this briefing at 10 o'clock on the 10th in conference room 10. Could be that it's nearly now 10 past 10, but in actual fact, 10 stands for thrust efficiency and new technology. Uh, if I can just, as, it's always going to be written in capital letters, it will never be a number. It actually means something to us here, not just a, a designation. And the Trent 1000-10, we will call it from this point on, going forward. Um, so let me just talk about the three elements, thrust, efficiency and new technology. Thrust, there are two key points here. The Trent 1000-10 is actually power for all three variants 
of the 787 family, so the, the 8, the 9, and assuming Boeing launching the Dash 10X. And if you're really smart, you'd spot that 10 also stands for 10X, 8, and 9. So it also powers the air. See what we did there? See? You marketing people definitely have yeah, to Yeah, sure, he's telling you. <laughs> yeah? How long did it take to come up with the TN? Uh, what would be better if I said really quickly or really slowly? Which is the best answer? <laughs> Ten seconds. Thinking of, it, <laughs> okay. thinking of it is really quick. Deciding it's right takes a long time. Um, so, this will be an engine that is for all three aircraft types. Uh, so, the 8 70,000, the 9 at 74,000 pounds of thrust. And we will initially certify the Dash 10 uh, at 76, but it's got the thrust capability to 78. Fundamentally, we've got the capability here to deliver the thrust whatever our, our operators require or need. And that's what we're trying to do here. Can you run us through those again? Yeah, I can. Sorry. Look, watch. There we go. 70. 70, 74, and then we'll cert, initial cert at 76, but with the capability for 78. Is that because you're not sure what they want? We, we will respond to whatever the customer needs. engine for all three and the flexibility to swap between and that's the crucial piece here. Um, in terms of efficiency, the E in 10, this engine will give us 3% better fuel burn than today's engine. And some of you will know there's been a sequence of improvements but the 10 now encompasses all the improvements and some of its own and it's combining the technologies from the XWB, the most efficient engine in the world, and from our advanced three large engine demonstrator program. So we're melding technology streams here, some already either in or programmed to be in the XWB, and some of it from the advanced three demonstrator program. And between them, they'll give us that 3% uh, compared to the engines flying today. And that's by 2016. And by today, by you mean the Pack B or the Pack I A? I do mean the Pack A. Pack B. Pack, Pack B. It's those, those episodes, isn't it? Um, and I'll come to where we think that performance takes us in comparative terms. In terms of the technologies, as I've said, we're taking technologies from the XWB and the Advanced 3. And at some later point, we can, I can bore you for England on more details and cross-sections and all that stuff. But I've just I've selected, really, a few from each piece. So the dark blue ones on this chart are, are basically from the XWB. The greeny blue, teal are really from our Advanced 3. And what you have to remember is, on the, the Dash 10, we're looking for two things. One is thrust, we want to have this capability up to 78,000 pounds, and efficiency. And these developments basically go to those two attributes, primarily. So we put in, uh, let's start with the HP compressor. We believe the HP compressor on this is taken from the XWB design, and we believe that the XWB compressor is currently the most efficient in the world. Uh, and so we've, having got a good piece of uh, technology, we're now retrofitting it back into the Trent 1000, which is really our compact with our customers that we will retrofit technology that's suitable into our previous, previous marks of, of engine. Um, the Rising Lion IP compressor is also in the XWB. What that allows us to do is actually put more flow through the IP compressor, as well as being slightly more efficient. So therefore we're doing the two things, efficiency and Greater flow means more thrust. So most of these technologies are about those two elements. Uh, the advanced HP turbine design um, is, is very similarly more about materials. It's about temperature capability. Sorry, it's more about temperature capability um, and cooling techniques. But again, what we're driving for here is efficiency and thrust. And although it has the basic design of the Trent 1000, it embodies XWB technologies into that as well as technologies from our uh, Advanced 3 demonstrator program. And I guess the other one to talk about is the refined air system. Um, as you push thrust upwards, temperatures will increase, so you need cooling technology. What we've done here is uh, the cooling system is designed for takeoff conditions when you need the most cooling because the engine is working the hardest. But what this system does is at cruise when you need less cooling, it reduces the amount of air taken from the engine 
by a fluidic control system with no moving parts. So what we're doing there is we're designing it for the most arduous operation, but then when the arduous operation has been reduced for crews, we're able to save more fuel load. So we're trying to do various things here, but mainly it's thrust and it's efficiency, and they're the two things that we're trying to get here. Okay. In terms of program, um, so we entered service last October. As I said, we've got 10 aircraft in service now. Uh, the Pack bs are rolling through. We have just signed an MOU with Boeing, which uh, basically, assuming they launch uh, the 10X, then it puts the Dash 10 on that aircraft. Um, and the Dash 10 will enter service in 2016. So the Dash 1010 will Yes, yeah. the baseline at that point yeah. for all aircraft. Um, so, is it, yeah. Sorry, um, yeah. so the, does the term, the evolution of the term, build on package C then? Oh, yes. As a fundamental yes. part of that? Yes, yeah, no, no, sorry. If I haven't made that clear, that there are, there are, there are, sorry, there are really three things going on. There's the Trent 1000 development, which is happening, we've described before, through that sequence to the C, which takes us to the Dash 9 aircraft with the thrust capability for the 9 of 74,000 pounds. Now, for the 10X, that would require more thrust, and therefore we need the thrust. Well, while we're developing that thrust, technology moves on. We, we have got lots more technology now from the XWB developments, as well as the Advanced 3, so we incorporate that at the same time. As always, there's always this never-ending drumbeat of technology coming along, and we incorporate that as we move forward. So, so how many non-10 engines do you expect to build and then what of, what of those features could be retrofitted? Well, don't, don't forget, we've already, that's what the B and C are, they're retrofitting some of the technologies. So the 10 is more technology on top of the C, which is technology on top of the B. So this is a continuous process of technology insertion. And, but the 10, crucially, fits on the two, exist, the two uh, contracted aircraft and is suitable for the 10X should Boeing choose to launch it. Clearly, it's not our decision whether Boeing launches the aircraft. You have to ask Boeing about that, but that's what that will do. As to numbers, I don't know offhand. You would launch it on the Dash 10, though, and then make it available for for the 8 and 9? Yes. Will the, the no, the bill of material will exist anyway. Okay. Yeah, sorry. So so the, the uh, configuration of engine, the Dash 10, will exist even if Boeing were to not launch that. It's a... Right, so commit, commit. So and with a 2016 in service, yes, day, yes. no matter what. Yeah. Okay, thank you. On their thanks and dash Yes, on their thanks and dash nines. And then clearly it's Boeing's decision on right. timing for a dash 10. Okay. So, yeah, so in 2016, anybody who's buying then a new 787 8, um, they'll be buying the 10 engine. Yes, there will be a scarfing. Uh -huh. There'll be a period over which you might be able to get both. So if an engine's got, if an airline has got a lot of one variant, might not want one another. But so there'll be a, a ramp period, which is not defined. And we'll define it with customers when we get near that point. And it's package C seventy four thousand pounds. Yes. Yes. So where does this leave us? Um, one, clearly what we've done is we have fulfilled our compact with our customers to upgrade engines with new technology as it becomes available, if it makes sense. So clearly, when it's core technologies, we can upgrade. We can't change the fan size because that would mean that you're going to sell and you high one. It ensures the lowest real-life fuel burn for every model of Boeing 787. By real life, uh, what we mean here is there are two elements to fuel burn when you're an airline. One is what you get when it's new, and then what happens is the engine deteriorates with time, and at some point the engine is overhauled, and then most of that fuel burn is recovered and then that deteriorates. So you end up with a, a series of curves that look a little bit like, uh, well, slopes, zigzag slopes. As the engine fuel burn deteriorates, you overhaul and it gets better. The important point for an airline is midway between new and overhaul because that's where the engine on average spends most of its time. So when we combine the new performance and the deterioration, we're confident that this will give the lowest real life fuel burn for each mark the Boeing 787 Dreamliner. Now, that in, in part is why we have won seven out of the last eight competitions. Well, uh, sorry, eight out of the last nine, I'm sorry. Thank you. 
eight out of nine. Seven, eight, seven, and then eight out of nine. I'm getting the numbers right. Eight ten, out ten, of ten is much easier. It would be. <laughs> So your airline is. Uh, when can I sell you? Uh, I'm, so, I'm so the customer. Robert, is the dash ten then also the engine that basically brings the dash eight performance to spec? Um, okay, good question. Spec is a Boeing issue, okay. okay, and I am not able to speak on behalf of Boeing. However, let me just answer it this way. Right. I noticed that our competitor is claiming that they're pit to reach a spec, yeah. we're confident we're better than our competitor. Okay? But I, 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 we are not, we know, we're not going to speak for Boeing, it's Boeing's responsibility, but our competitor has said they have met spec and we're confident we're better than our competitor, so I'm sure you can join dots uh, on that basis. So uh, with better you mean with the PEC C engine? 10 to pit 10. 2. And clearly, it's the real life fuel burn that the airline customers are looking for here. Uh, they want that mid-life performance to be the best it can possibly be, because that's where most of the fuel is burned on average. It's, that's the best bet. And obviously in the world we're in today, it also of course minimises carbon emissions. Uh, we, won't, we won't get into ETS just at this moment. So, I think we brought that in nicely in time. Oh,